it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me again for another week of fun and crafting. I have just spent the most amazing weekend with 70, yes, 70, 70 of the crafty team that I am part of as we had a virtual team retreat, which was such fun. Um, there were people from Germany, people from the Netherlands, from across the UK and even someone from the USA who is currently living over there whilst her husband is working over there on a two-year placement. So we really have had an amazing weekend. We even had some special guests all the way from Australia. So yeah, great fun. Um, and fingers crossed we're going to do another one maybe later in the year so who knows so if you want to be part of that you know what to do ask me about joining so zany zebras we looked at zany zebras on saturday it was my simple stamping saturday project and we made three projects as ever if you want to see the projects all three of them you'll see one of them in a minute um then just pop over to my blog and it will be the post previous to this one because this is on Monday the 6th of July and the post with the Zany Zebra Simple Stamping Saturday was on the 4th of July. It is such a fun set. It's in both the beginner brochure and in the annual catalogue because it is perfect for all sorts of crafting. I am going to ask you to apologise for the state of my grid paper. I didn't shoot this video until after the weekend retreat and I've kind of had to blitz my workspace of all the projects that I was doing to clear a little space and I haven't really cleared the somewhat mess that is on my grid paper so apologies for that but I did mention I think it was on this Saturday that our mini paper pumpkin boxes are perfect for our note cards and envelopes so I thought I would take that and work from it so these are the mini paper pumpkin boxes they come 10 in a packet flat packed and sorry about the shininess um, I will get one out to show you how to put it together but what I want to show you is that if you are a beginner stamper it doesn't mean you can't do 3D projects you can I mean I hope most of my 3D projects when I remember to do them are relatively straightforward anyway but I mustn't fiddle I mustn't fiddle um, but this is just a question of putting a box together and trust me it is going to be one of the easiest um, projects, 3D projects that you could possibly want to put together. I've just realised I have forgotten to get a slightly strategic piece of kit out, which is a piece of Whisper White cardstock. So let me show you the project and then I'll take you through it. This is the project. So it is one of our mini pizza boxes and I have got toot on it already. Um, I've made this wrap which is just from a piece of Whisper White card. It's belly band, so it slides off. We've got zebras on the side. We've got a popped up zebra. Can you see that it's popped up? Hopefully you can on the front, on the front. And then we've got more zebras on the back. Um, and I'm going to show you how I made it uh, and show you just how much you can get in the box. So my customers will know that when I send out my monthly thank you gifts which go to anybody who places an online order with me everyone gets a thank you card a thank you gift which is a bit of kind of nonsense um, but it will be gift wrapped and then if they use the host code for the month they also get a host they get to share in part of the host rewards so I take all the host rewards divide by the number of people who have ordered and used the host code and buy something to that value to send out to everyone in their package and they all come in little cardboard boxes like this but bigger 
often quite a lot bigger. Um, they also always come wrapped in tissue paper, not this tissue paper, but always come wrapped in tissue paper. I really, really appreciate my custom my customers, so I like to give them a an absolutely VIP um, treatment. So everything comes beautifully wrapped. Product shares come wrapped. Thank you gifts come wrapped. Everything does. So let me get these out. These are just some note cards that I've made over the weeks with Simple Stamping Saturday. Uh, but I wanted to count them for you to show you just how many you can get in a box. So one, two, the note cards are inside, I should add. So this is a note card and envelope ready to go. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 note cards and envelopes in one mini pizza box. And it still gives you room for some tissue paper just to wrap it all up. And obviously you could add a bow, uh, uh, some ribbon and a bow if you wanted to. And then you close up your little box, pop your belly band on, although I would hasten to add it's much easier to make the belly band in situ. Um, because then you don't have to slide it on and off, but pop your belly band on, and there you go. That would just be such a nice little gift to send someone, and obviously you could you could even wrap this even more if you wanted. So let me show you first how to put the box together, and then how I made this. I'm going to change the dimensions of the card very slightly, because I thought this was half a sheet of A4, and it's not. It's slightly more than half a sheet of A4. It was one of it was a leftover piece from one of the projects I made over the weekend. So, mini pizza box. They are food safe. So I'm sure it says here somewhere on here, but it certainly says it in. Yes, here it is. Food safe. Um, it says so in the catalogue as well. And they're shiny on one side and matte on the other, which means that if you want to do any inking techniques on the non-shiny side you can if you're going to do any spraying with alcohol um, which I have done in the past I would suggest they're possibly no longer food safe because the alcohol will get into the card um, and indeed if you do it with water I wouldn't recommend doing it with water because it's going to soak in and make the box very wibbly but wibbly is a technical phrase you understand um, but yes, you can colour this with ink, with blend, you know, with um, stamping, right, uh, stamping daubers, sponge daubers, with uh, stamping sponges, all sorts. You can stamp on it because it's a matte surface. So let your imagination run wild. To put the box together, this is what I would call a standard PIP box. I can't remember what PIP stands for, but um, all my boxes that I use come flat packed and they are PIP boxes and it's P-I-P -P as initials. So what I always do is fold all of the, along all of the crease lines before I start uh, because it's much easier to fold something when it is flat than when it is 3D. And then to put it together you just pop the two sides, uh, well the front and the back, in and the flaps and you fold with the flaps in between, you fold the side in and the side, the little tabs on the side just pop into these holes. So these tabs here pop into these holes here. So again, just fold in and pop the tabs in and that is your box. Just fold the lid in. It's like a standard pizza box. So if you're getting takeaways, pizza takeaways, it's the same basic idea just nicer and it's probably going to have something nicer in it. So there we are, just a simple little box. And as I say, anyone could put that together. Now what I do tend to do is give this a really good fold, the front, because it does sometimes tend to gape a little. Uh, so you do want to make sure it is aware that you are in charge and that you don't want it gaping. But once you've wrapped the, wrapped the belly band round, it's not going to be a problem. So that is our box ready to take our gifts. 
This is a standard sheet of A4. Um, now, for those of you who are in North America, do not worry, this will work with your 8.5 by 11 as well. All we're going to do is cut it in half, which in uh, for international A4, it's at 10.5 centimetres. So we're going to cut it in half lengthways with the narrow end at the top. Obviously, for 8.5 by 11, you're going to be cutting it at 4.25 but the 11 inches will be more than enough. I start from the bottom and I start with the, the back because I want it folding round so that, so this is the one I've made. I want this to be pointing towards the back. I want this all to be nice and smooth at the front. So I've got my card ready to go and I'm just going to pop it where I think it's likely to end up and just make a little a little bend. In fact, if you do it from the front, it doesn't matter. Do it from the front so that you know you've got enough and that you've got your seam where you would like it to be. And I would suggest you have it part way um, towards the back. Don't have it on the back edge because it will just not work as well. So do it from that side. So I'll do it from this side. It's going to be a, a little bit further forward than I would want it, but it's fine. So pop your, your crease line, don't go further than a, just a kind of general crease line, and line up your edges, grab your bone folder, and crease it really well. Then come back with your box, and now that you've got that established as a definite crease, you can just fold your box round and gently crease as you go and then just make sure that it's lined up straight here. You don't want it doing this, you want it straight here. And then just kind of, you know, just rub your fingers. You do not want it too snug. Too snug is not good just right, just sort of wrapped gently round is perfect. Then come in and reinforce those creases. So pop them in with intention. And just the last one, so just reinforce that. Double check. You know, this is one of those measure three times, cut once. So just check that everything is working okay, and it is, and it's reasonably loose. We will adjust that later anyway. And do not stick yet. So let's just make sure I know which is my front and which is my back. Not that it really matters, but I might go that way actually. So this is going to be this is going to be my front. So, fold it so that you've got your front side, if you see what I mean, um, facing you. And then grab, I've taken this as my front, grab your zebra and your memento ink pad. Any other ink pad would be just as good. I just decided to keep with the black and white. And then stamp, whoops stamp along the side. Now I did a bit of a turn so that it looked as if it was looking onto the top. So stamp at one edge and up, re-ink, stamp at the other edge and re-ink and then stamp in the middle because that way you can get your zebras reasonably evenly spaced. Then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the back, but with a different stamp. So I'm using the one which looks as if it's looking backwards. And again, I'm going to ink up and stamp. Actually, I don't really want his back on it. Mm. A little bit of back is OK. So stamp. and stamp 
and then again you can put your last one in the gap between them and you're more likely to be evenly spread. So that's our front and our back, so now we need to do the middle and for the middle I'm going to open the whole thing out flat and I've got the jumping, oh sorry I've got I've got um, my computer volume on, let me resolve that one. It's off now. So I've got the jumping zebra and I'm just going to stamp him there. Now if you like fussy cutting, and you know I do, I'm also going to ink him up and stamp him on a piece of scrap paper. This is the extra step if you want, you do not have to do it. So, but I just, while I was inked up, then I've got this funny little zigzaggy stamp, this one here, which I've popped underneath. So let me ink that up. It doesn't matter which way you have it, whether it's the fat end this end or the fat end that end, it's just to give the impression of, I'm jumping! Then I've taken the kick your heels up, which is why I chose this stamp, and it's time to celebrate. And I kind of stuck them on the same block. Well, I haven't kind of stuck them on the same block. They, they are stuck on the same block. And then I'm going to pop that towards the top. And there we go. So that is our basic stamping done. Let me pop that away. I'm going to pop the whole thing together and then do the fussy cutting. Now do remember while I'm doing all of this that you are very, very welcome to subscribe if you don't already. I would be thrilled if you would. Uh, and you can do that just in the bottom right hand corner. Questions, comments, leave below the in the description or below the description bar. And um, if you like the video at the end, if my brain would work, um, then give it a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Uh, and obviously, if you wish to share, that would be even better. So subscribe, like and share. Right. So I want my front, which is this, to come over the back. So to get this stuck, I'm going to take my seal. You could use seal or seal plus. I just need to get this running. So I'm going to do the inside. Whoops. The inside of my front flap and the outside of my back. So this is the one that's going to be underneath. Yes, that's the front. You want to keep that one out of the way fold in your back and then let it relax a little. You do not want this tight. You don't want to press it in. You want it a little loose and then just kind of let it relax a bit and then just press down. And that way the recipient will be able to get the belly band on and off as opposed to having to rip it to pieces and we don't want it ripped to pieces because we like our little zebra. So if you want to fussy cut do not feel you have to. As I say this is so that if you're slightly more advanced than a beginner you can you can add something extra. Obviously if you want to colour it as well you can do that. You could use blends because obviously any bleeding will be on the inside so no one's going to know. I've got glue on my thumb. So to fussy cut, you know I love my fussy cutting. I always come in from an edge so I don't start straight onto a... So I would never come in and kind of cut straight onto something. I would always come in from an angle and then move the paper, not your scissors. All you want your scissors to do is open and close. And I rarely let my scissors get more than half closed. So I'm using basically this little bit here. 
it's just what works for me. Uh, obviously everyone is different. The only time I would use the points is if I really needed to go into a, a pointy bit that I didn't want to round out, so I've rounded that out very slightly. And it becomes kind of almost automatic. Now here we haven't got a line as such. That's fine, don't follow the line. This is its mane. Its mane is not going to be completely straight, so give it a bit of a wiggle. Go round the ear and round the mane a bit more. Come in, come out. You want that whole fluid feel. Now, if you want, you can do the tail separately. Frankly, life's too short. Uh, and it would be quite fun getting a tiny bit of dimensional onto this bit of the tail so that this bit didn't break off. So there are limits. I have been known to do things like that, don't get me wrong, but there are limits. Now for the hooves at the back, um, sorry I just wanted to un get that a little less rounded. For the hooves at the back I have gone in but not all the way. And again, I'm going to round out. You're trying to avoid a really sharp angle on this particular fussy cut. To so say for things like alphabets, it may be appropriate, but I think you get a nicer finish if it's slightly rounded. And then round off. So I haven't got any sharp points anywhere. They're all rounded. Both external and internal are rounded points. And then all you need is some dimensionals. Now I happen to have both mini and standard, so I'm going to use both mini and standard. If you don't have both, then just cut some pieces out of your standard ones or just use more of your minis. Um, either is fine. And you don't need to go mad with the dimensionals on this because all you're doing is holding it off the page. It's not, it's not weight bearing as such. So let, as I say, let's not go completely mad. Um, it's not even going through the post necessarily in an envelope where it might get squished. This I would suggest if you're going to post it, you put it into a much larger box. And then just line him up and pop him down. And there we have our really sweet little gift wrapped box, which the recipient can slide the belly band off. And as I say, if you want to get involved in colour, please do. You could have a piece of um, coloured cardstock underneath and then put this on top. It's going to make it a little harder to wrap but feel free. And then this is the one we started with, with our little zebras going all the way round. And I've just left the bottom blank. You could use this for a message. But there we go. Just a nice quick little project. When I say quick, it's managed to take me 23 minutes. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Do remember tomorrow I have my Facebook Live coffee and card session, which goes is live at about 11 o'clock in the morning British summer time. So wherever you are in the world, look for 11 a.m. Um, in British summer time to convert to where where you are. Uh, I tend to go uh, go live a wee bit earlier, but we have great fun. We've got prize uh, prizes to be won, all sorts. So and they're products. Um, so yes. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. If you've enjoyed it, as I say, please give me a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe. And if you wish to share this video, I would be absolutely thrilled if you would. If you need any of the products and you're in the UK, please, please do shop with me. I would be, um, I would be so, so pleased uh, for your custom and I will try and look after you incredibly well. Uh, if you would like to join my team and you're in obviously the UK, but also France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands, I would be thrilled to welcome you on board as well. 
and remember if you join in July you can include items from the new um, autumn winter mini catalogue in your new starter kit so and then get even more at a discount wonderful thank you very much indeed on that note I will say goodbye goodbye